so welcome to the show, Matt. Um, really appreciate your time today and uh, really looking forward to interviewing you and, you know, have a bit of fun and have a good conversation. So welcome to the show, mate. Yeah, thanks so much for having me on, man. I've listened to a couple of your shows and uh, really excited to see what, what's going to come out of this one. Yeah, awesome, cool. Okay, so um, so before we get into uh, your company and um, what you're known for is LinkedIn as well, uh, I yep. found out that you've got a bit of background in door-to-door sales, which is pretty interesting. So would you mind telling us oh, yeah. a bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when I finished school, um, you know, my dad decided he, he decided, you know, on my behalf that I need to go to college and go to university. Uh, I was like, dude, I think you got the wrong person here. I hated school. (laughs) And so there's no ways I'm going to go and spend another couple of years going and studying where Mm. I barely passed, you know, grade 12 and I I hated every moment of it. Yeah. So instead, you know, I I went over to the UK uh, and I landed up doing door to door sales over there, uh, selling Mm. gas and electric. So, you know, we'd have to go door to door and um, we'd go, th- we went through a rigorous training process, mm. had to learn a script word for word. And every day we'd go out. That was your marine, first job? Just to jump in straight? Oh, wow. Second job, actually. Second first job, job okay, was yeah. working as a waiter. So okay. I was actually worked as a waiter before that Yeah. because you know, we didn't grow up wealthy. So mm. I worked as a waiter before that and uh, so that I could make some money so that I could go overseas. Yeah. And then you know, I found a, a job in door to door sales. Oh, cool. Cool. Okay. And, um, yeah. that, that was pretty much uh, like you weren't expecting to jump in. You just need to get some cash in. Right. And then you, know, you just give the whole door to door sales a go and then, yeah. Okay, cool. Well, what actually happened was that when I went over to the UK, there was supposed to be a family friend who was going to hook me up with a job. And when I arrived there in the UK, you know, I was kind of expecting them to be there at Heathrow, like waiting for me. Okay, cool. Here's where we go. All the rest. You know, I was just turned 18 at the time. Mm. And instead I got a phone call when I got there and I phoned him. I was like, Hey dude, where are you? He's like, mm. no, no, what you need to do is get on a train <laughs> and go to the station. Yeah. I was like, what? He says, yes, just get on the central line. It's the red line and go all the way to High Wickham. I was mm. like, I've got no idea what you're talking about right now. Okay. So I went and asked the train guys and they said, okay, cool. You get on this line, you go here, go here. So I land up at the, at the train station. I'm expecting mm. this guy to be there. Okay. So I'm like, phone him when I get there. Um, dude, where are you? Mm. Uh, no, no. So what you need to do now is you <laughs> need to go and find a South African shop. Okay. Find some accommodation. I'm like, what? What do you mean find accommodation? <laughs> he says, so what you do is you just go find a South African shop and they'll hook you up. I was okay. like, okay, well, where is that? He said, well, mm. if you're at the station, go left, right, left, wherever it is. Mm. And there's a South African shop there. They'll hook you up. Okay. So I do that. Get the accommodation. Okay, what now? He's like, I'm going to pick you up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. We're going to get started. Mm. And it turns out this job was to go and install satellite dishes, go and install Sky TV <laughs> onto roofs. Okay. So what, and did you like have you... Men- menu have to do it yourself to actually climb up there and install it yourself? And... Yeah. Yeah, we were doing the installations. We were the installation team. And so that lasted about two weeks. And I was like, there's no ways I'm doing this. You know, from five in the morning until 10 at night in the freezing cold. I was like, hell no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I went looking for something else and this job came up and they did this interview and I was like, this sounds good. Let's do it. Mm, Next mm. thing I know, I was approved. They shipped me off to a castle in Scotland for two weeks to go do sales training. Mm. And then we went back to our relevant places and um, yeah, just like that was awesome. the beginning and, and the end yeah. of it. And then, yeah. you know, when I got back to South Africa a year later, um, I was doing, what was I doing? I was selling corporate clothing and gifts. Okay. And then the dude who I worked with, I did that for, for a couple of months, absolutely hated it. Okay. Um, there were some other odds and sods in between. Yeah. But then one day, um, the guy who I used to work for in the UK phoned me up and he's like, Matt, you got to come and see me. We've just started something here. It's yeah. amazing. And it's the easiest thing we've ever sold. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so it turns out it was switchboard telephone systems to businesses. Also okay. door to door. Door to, okay. Yep. No worries. <laughs> yep. So we're signing people up on five-year agreements, walking yeah. in five-year agreements. And so what happened was that he phoned me on the Tuesday. I saw him on the Wednesday. I quit my job on the Wednesday and I started on the Thursday. Okay. <laughs> and I never looked back. I ended up doing that for another seven years, both wow. you know, working for somebody. And mm. then, you know, in the last four years, I had my own company mm. uh, with two business partners. And yeah, we grew that to a seven figure business in four Amazing. years. Amazing. What was your closing yeah. ratio like? So you were like knocking on doors, but out of the hundred that you're 
that your door knock, what was your, your closing ratio about 10% or 1% or what was it like? Yeah. So here's some interesting numbers for you. So in the UK, when I was knocking it, I mean, sometimes it would depend because mm. there would be our people home. Yeah. This yeah, is the big yeah. thing. <laughs> okay. And so, I mean, there were days where I'd knock like 300 doors and you wow. get like two sales. Yeah. That is, a, no yeah. You, you, yeah. No one's home. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you get beaten up and sometimes they mm. like, you know, they swear and shout at you and they build, let the dogs on you. <laughs> Get the dogs on to you. Yeah. yeah it yeah. sounds like you've been doing some door to door yeah, sales. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> and I think I heard on another podcast you were talking about the significance of sales, obviously. That's where um because all businesses, as you know, you need to generate revenue without rev Boy without thing. sales, you need to you need to generate revenue. You don't right? have business. So, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um so what would your advice be to sell someone who wants to improve in their sales and in, in their business? Man. Oof, there's lots. I mean, if someone wants to improve their sales, I think the number one thing is that you've got to focus on it. You've got to focus on it. Yeah. Because yeah, most people don't have their focus on the right things. Mm. Okay. And when I talk to them in their business and when we help people's business, help people grow their businesses, I ask them, what are the things that you're doing in a day? Cause mm. everyone's so busy doing all sorts of crap. Mm. Right. I'm like, well, what is the stuff that's keeping you so busy? Yeah. Oh, I've got this project that I'm working on and I'm busy building this and I'm talking to these people and these people. I'm like, okay, where's the focus on generating leads yep. and having sales conversations? Mm -hmm. That nine times out of 10, that's the biggest problem. Because the people who are having sales conversations where their, their focus is on marketing, on generating leads and then turning those into paying customers, mm. they have very different questions. Mm. You know, That's their true. questions are around what you were asking me just now is how do I improve my conversion rate? How do I get better qualified leads so that I'm not speaking to 20 people and signing up one client, mm. right? Because mm. in the door to door sales, I mean, what we used to do is drive around to the industrial areas, count out 10 doors and we drop a salesperson off. That is pure. And cold. you had to sign. Yeah. <laughs> that is cold. Pure. Cold. Yeah. That's not warm at all. Yeah. <laughs> pure. And I, look, I am proud to say that in, you know, in, in the eight years that I've been knocking doors, there wasn't a day that I went out that I didn't sign a deal. Yeah. You know, <laughs> wow, so that's... whatever it takes, man. Mm, 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 mm. The law of averages, isn't it? Just, just keep knocking and <laughs> someone's going to say yes eventually. <laughs> well, it's about a system, right? And you want to yeah. make sure that you take care of the people when you do get a, pe a person that's qualified, you want to make sure that you take care of them and you spend time with them. That's true. Yeah. Because you know, you can, yes, have the numbers game where you're just knocking doors, knocking doors, knocking doors. But if you're just thinking next door, next door, next door, yep. you know, you're going to lose focus on, well, when you get that person in front of you, mm. I want to, I want to really make sure I'm, I'm using my process. I'm qualifying them properly. I'm taking the time to get to know them, to build that rapport, mm. to actually build that relationship. Yep. Because if I get somebody that's qualified, I'm not going to let them go until they buy if I know that what I've got can genuinely help them and move them forward in what they're doing, they're not getting away. Yeah, true. I remember you said um, the importance of relationships. It, like you get a lot of people on LinkedIn who just message you and they just dump the whole pitch on you, right? But there's no relationship oh, building. Yes. But but you talk about your strategy and your style is all about, you got to build a connection with them, right? You got to build a relationship yes. with them. So can, can you elaborate a bit about that one? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, so I can talk about the biggest mistake that I see. And, you know, because I also get these spammy messages all yeah. the time. <laughs> SEO and app development and all mm. of that, right? And you look at it and you're like, these guys didn't even take the time to see what I do. Mm. I mean, I've had other LinkedIn marketers sending me messages saying, hey, would you like to learn how to market on LinkedIn? I'm like, dude, really? Yeah. And here's the big mistake that they make, right? Number one is that they don't position themselves. They, they, don't get, they don't get laser focused on their ideal client. Yep. Okay. So they're just kind of taking a shotgun approach and hoping that somebody's going to fall out. Mm. So there's, there's three steps. So there's three stages that we work on, which is position, connect, and scale. Now, position, in each connect, one of these stages, yep. position, connect, and scale. So in the position stage, there's three steps. Number one, get laser focused on your ideal client. So who are you targeting? So at the moment on LinkedIn, we're targeting coaches, consultants, and advisors. 
Now, you know, in, we've worked with entrepreneurs in all different kinds of industries and in, mm. in pretty much anything you can think of and some that I guarantee you haven't thought of, mm. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. And so we've chosen a target audience. Now, what we've done is we've gone deep with them. We've done our market research. We've understood who they are as people. What are the big pains that they're going through? What are the things keeping them up at night? Mm. Where do they want to get to? What are the goals they want to achieve? And what are their big dreams and aspirations? Taking that, we then create step number two, which is called a pickup line. Okay. Mm. And this essentially in LinkedIn is called, is your headline. This tells people how to work with you before they even talk to you. Okay. Can I use that on, just uh, that. on Tinder or something? <laughs> no, I can't do it. Hell <laughs> yeah. Hell okay. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, I would just so change it, some so of the pick words up line make is it really, business right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So pickup <laughs> line is the headline on, on your LinkedIn profile, right? And that's where you have to... Absolutely. It. Okay, cool, cool. And you want to go from, you know, being ordinary and, you know, what we call brown box syndrome, right? What's Which that? is where you look the same as everybody else. Yeah. Right? So you've got a brown box, you have 20 brown boxes, they're all the same. Mm. What differentiates one brown box from another? Mm. Is the packaging that's on the outside. Mm. that tells you what's in the thing, right? Mm. So when you get this right, you go from being ordinary to irresistible. And let me give you an example of this as well. Okay. So my company is called The Virtual Edge. And what most people have got on there is, you know, CEO of their company name. So CEO of The Virtual Edge or coach, author, speaker, or you know, whatever it is, whatever yeah. it is in their business. Sales director, marketing director, whatever it is. Name ranks so your what I've got. <laughs> A hundred percent, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and so what I've got is I help coaches, consultants, and advisors get two to five high value leads per day from LinkedIn without mm, paying ads. Very nice. Very nice. That's a, that's a, like a USP, isn't it? Very uh, sexy mm. USP with a number in, in it as well. Very specific as well. Beautiful. Mm. And it's in 120 characters. So it's like a tweet, right? Mm. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. You only have 120 characters to utilize on LinkedIn. And then on, on the headline. And then, so the third step is to do a profile makeover. Okay. Now, most people have got their profiles written as a CV, right? It's all about them and their skills and what they do and how they do it. And like, who cares? It's all about yeah. you. Mm -mm. So it's an egocentric profile where the big results come in is that you've got to turn it into a client centric sales page. So client you take all that information. Okay. Mm. Yep. Take all that information that we did in the market research, the pains, the frustrations, the what keeps them up at night, to the goals and desires and their dreams and aspirations. And you write a page that talks about that. How are you going to get them from where they are right now to where they want to, where they want to be? Mm. What are the big pains? Address those big pains and show them that there is a solution and that you can be the one to do it and that you've got a system to take them through to get it there. Mm, that's really good. How long do you spend on creating the, that avatar, the, the customer avatar on, on the pains and frustrations? Uh, you, you probably do a lot of research and everything, right? Like you sit down with the client. How long would that usually take to do that? So it depends. Mm. Um, you know, if we're working with somebody one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, I've got this thing down where we get the profile and everything done within about an hour and a half. Wow, hour and you a know, half. I give them wow. some work to do beforehand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm assuming you'll That's take, if you're like, working you directly yeah. with me. Yeah, yeah, right? okay, yeah, 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 okay. That's good. I mean, we've done this a few times. Mm, <laughs> um, mm, that's good. But, and because the big thing is, is, you know, like I said earlier, people are trying to hunt with a shotgun, you know, mm. from a thousand yards. You're not going to hit anything. Mm. You've got to have a sniper rifle. So a lot of the time, I just say to people, just choose one. Who do you have right now that you love working with that you wish you had more of? Yeah. What are their criteria? Okay, cool. Let's go with that and start with that. Okay. But the interesting thing is that when we, when we take people th through the market research side of things, that's some work that they need to go do by themselves. I, you know, we don't do that together. I don't do that for them. That's some work they need to go do by themselves. Okay. So they're researching. Interesting yeah. thing happens on this though. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there's two very interesting things that happen. One is that they generate leads. Yep. Okay. And they get, I mean, one is that they, they get really clear on who their ideal client is, how mm. they serve them and what results they help them get and where they need to take them. Okay. And the second thing is they generate leads and clients by doing this. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay. How about we- um, like measuring it? So, so you've set up the, I mean, you, you've got, you've got the profile, you've determined the customer yes. profile, you've set up the LinkedIn profile as well. So it's attracting these leads. How do I measure that? You know, people are clicking on it and stuff like that. Like you're probably doing some sort of reporting system behind it. Like how do you measure that? Yeah, so LinkedIn gives you some pretty cool insights in terms of how many people have viewed your profile and all that mm. fun stuff. Okay. Um, but some of the statistics that they give you is when your profile is set up correctly, you know, mm. you get 31 times more views and 26 times more messages. Yeah, okay. Just by having it set up properly, mm-hmm. right? So they post your profile out and they get your profile out more. Yeah, okay. But then when we start talking connections and building up your connections and building up your relationships, those are different metrics that we look at. Yep. Cool. Right. So we're looking at, in terms of building that up, we've got um, your connection rate. Mm -hmm. So when you're connecting with people, how many of them are actually accepting that connection rate? And then we've got from the connection to message response and then message response to actual lead. Wow, that's really detailed message response, connection rate, and then the the, the um, conversion rate to, to leads, right? Yeah, from, and from, then from leads a step to sell, yeah. further. Yeah, so we, we even we even take it a step further. So then conversion, uh, so conversion rate to lead, and then lead to qualified lead, and then qualified lead to sale. Mm, okay, and this is all pure organic, as so. So when you've set up the profile, you're not running any ads or anything, right? That's amazing. Because I'm so used to, um, yeah, I mean, if I want to get leads, I'm thinking about, okay, I'm going to advertise on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I could probably have to spend a hundred bucks here and then try and generate these leads that way. But, you know, your method is very interesting. You're generating organic leads just by modifying the, I mean, finding out the customer avatar, then modifying the, the headline and, yeah. and so forth. That's really cool. And I do, here's, here's the crazy part. Mm. I do between 10 and 15 highly qualified sales calls every week. 10 to 15 highly qualified sales calls a week. Really? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what I determine as a highly qualified sales call is this, right? So I've got my profile and my positioning set up. We, someone has checked out the profile. Um, we've started a conversation. We've shared with them the kind of people that we work with, how we help them get results, and are they interested in getting on a call and chatting more about that? Okay. They say yes. They give us their email address and cell phone number. Okay. Mm, mm. Then someone on my team calls them and does a qualification call. If they're qualified, then they get on a call with me. All right. Mm. And in between that call, they get sent a video, which educates them on the process. Yep. So by the time somebody really gets good. to me, they've gone through a whole process and you know, that allows us to have like a 60 to 80% conversion rate. Mm. And the good thing about it is I'm only speaking to qualified buyers. Okay. Okay. So, so you're saying that you're setting up a, a, like a sales funnel, right? Where you've got the presentation ready, <laughs> they go through the presentation. And then from that point, you know, you can measure whether it converts to a customer and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's really good. Amazing. And uh, your, your company is Virtual Edge. And this is what's, oh, sorry. It's called uh, the Rainmaker system. Is that right? This is the system that you're talking about? That's the system we're yep. talking about. The company okay. is called the Virtual Edge. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. And um, okay. That's really good. And I think you, um, I saw that you were mentioning that you were able to increase sales for a particular client about 800%. So what did you do for that particular client? So it's interesting. You know, we've got a couple of different levels on how we help people. Um, so step number one, you know, level one is you want to get more leads. Mm. Here's a system, plug into the system, get more leads. Yep, cool. Um, step number two is you want to convert more of those leads into paying customers. We've got a system for that. And then step number three is how do we actually grow your business as a whole, right? Because we've got a lot of skills in that side of things too. So what we did with these guys was that that they're actually a a swimming pool company. So they fix and sell and renovate swimming pools. And they're a company based in in Durban, which is a town here in, in South Africa. Okay. And interesting thing had happened was that at the time when this happened, Durban was going through a drought and you weren't allowed to fill up your pools or water your lawns or any of that stuff. Yeah. Okay. And so what we did was we took a look at their business model and, and who, who they were focusing on and what their offer was. And so we decided to change their, change their offer, focus on um, hotels and resorts and leisure places like that, mm-hmm. who, you know, didn't fall. They weren't part of the same restrictions. 
Mm. And what happened was that they picked up three clients, three seven figure sales um, in two months. Wow, that's impressive. Was that a local business? Obviously, it was local business, or was it some sort local of business for them? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's really good. Yeah. And so that was taking a look at their business model and the structure and their offer and how they were selling and what message and their sales method that they were using to get that. Mm. So for us, you know, LinkedIn, I love LinkedIn. It's a, it's a fantastic avenue to generate leads. And when we start looking at the next step in terms of the sales process and building the business, there, it doesn't matter where your leads come in from. Mm. You know, you can have leads coming in from absolutely anywhere and still plug people into the same process and it'll get you those results. Mm, okay what's the thoughts on um the sales navigator as well i've seen it um love it oh, yeah that's good you recommend that love okay. it yeah yeah all right 100%, then. Without a doubt. Yeah, sign up for it yep sign up for the premium yeah, okay, i wish yeah. they had i wish they had an affiliate a partnership program because i would be making a killing off of that okay no worries then. okay so you highly recommend it you're using it as a tool it's like a prospecting tool right that you use Definitely. to okay yeah and you can message people that's it's really worth good. The 70 or 80 bucks or whatever you spend on it, it is worth every cent. Okay, cool. Awesome. And um, what about key? I think um, you're optimizing the, the headline, right? For particular keywords. Yep. Uh, what tools are you using in terms of keywords to, to research? Or like, well, it's interesting. Yep. I mean, mm. I, I don't really focus too much. There's, a, there's some strategies out there where people focus a lot on, you know, keywords and SEO and optimization mm. and all the rest. You don't do that. Yeah. You, yeah, we don't focus so much on that. Um, where we really focus on is showing people how we can solve their problem mm -hmm. before they even talk to us. Okay. And so we find that when people take a look at the headline, you know, they see that out there and it's like, okay, that makes sense. Mm. Okay, that's really good. So capture their attention. Okay. Uh, all right, then let's have a look at um, initially you, yeah, there was a story about you. I think you're building up a business and you burnt out as well. And then eventually you figured out how to balance your life as well. So could you elaborate a bit about that one as well? Yeah. Moving um, a bit away from the so, LinkedIn, <laughs> knowing a bit yeah, about yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. That's okay. hundred percent. Yeah. So it's interesting. I mean, cause this was actually, um, and when you said this question through, it got me a little bit, it got me thinking a little bit. Cause you know, mm -hmm. one of the questions you asked was the specific mental frameworks. I was like, mm. Jesus, I've never, I've never really thought of it like that, you know? Yep. Yep. And um, what actually happened was I didn't burn out. I actually got really sick. You got really and sick. And I think okay. part, of, part of the sickness was burnout as well. Because um, mm. I just sold my, my previous business, my Samsung dealership. I went from a million miles an hour to a dead stop. And now I'm building this other business as well. And um, I was actually, I was diagnosed with uh, Crohn's disease. And um, so what that is, it's an autoimmune disease that attacks your large intestine. Mm. And I, I went down from 82 kilograms down to 59 kilograms in the space of two months. Whoa. Yeah, it was nuts. Mm. Um, you know, I was, I could see my rib bones in my chest. Uh, it was crazy. Mm. Uh, you, in and you out just of couldn't eat all the time. Like you just weren't hungry and it just really interfered with your diet and everything okay no actually the other the other way like mm. i would be going to the toilet like 30 40 times a day mm. okay. so it was all just whether i ate something or not i just going to the toilet body just flushing everything yeah. out and it was yeah. like it, it was unreal man it was mm. unreal and so, you know, I was going to doctors, I was in and out of hospitals, seeking specialists. At one stage, they wanted to take my colon out. Uh, mm. I was like, that's not happening. And then I got to walk around with a bag all the time. I was like, mm. nah, I'll figure another way out to do that yeah. um, without having to go through the surgery. And um, I guess like when I was, that's really when I went on the journey of like, how do I heal myself? Mm. You know, how do I focus on me so that I can heal? And, you know, I physically couldn't work. Um, I physically didn't have the energy. I mean, I wouldn't sleep the whole night and then I'd be up at, you know, sort of my, my window to get stuff done was between 9am and 11am. Mm, that, that's when I, I kind of felt okay enough to do stuff. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and that's actually where the LinkedIn Rainmaker system really came in was because I figured out that I could work an hour a day. I could generate leads and clients 
mm, um, yeah. within an hour a day and, and super simple because, and that's how I built the system. Yeah. Yeah. I needed to be able to systemize it so that I could actually get stuff done, build the business, get some income coming in without dying. Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, much. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I like, um, it, it goes back to what you were talking about before about not a lot of people focus too much on the, the important side of the business, which is the sales, the lead generation. And like you just said, yeah. between nine and 11 AM, that's the only time you've got to, to do some, some positive work around, which is to generate those leads. <laughs> okay. yeah. I physically, I physically wasn't able to, um, and you know, most people don't have that problem. Mm. Most people, they've just got a focus problem. Mm, you know mm. so for me it's like i had to focus on doing that because you know i wanted to make money i've got this like drive in me like i love to sell i love to make money it keeps me going mm. but you know i also had to focus on the spiritual side of things and and mm. what i really wanted you know stop working ridiculous hours i mean i went through a stage of working from like 6 a.m till 2 a.m the next day mm. and i just stopped that i said i'm not working past five o'clock um, I'm focusing on my health. I'm focusing on my mindset. Mm, um, I'm working on, I worked with a spiritual healer as well. Mm. And it was interesting. Like some of the things are, are a bit crazy, but like I had to learn to love myself again. Mm. You know, when you, when you look in the mirror and you're a stick figure and you can barely walk and you don't have energy and you have to hold on to everything as you move along, it's like, something's it's wrong. Difficult. Something's got to change. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. you know, I had to learn to let go of things. I mean, I didn't realize how much emotional baggage I had. Uh, I had to learn to let go of things. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, a lot of it came from a book by David R. Hawkins called Letting Go. Um, I don't know if you've read that or Power Versus not read Force that, no. is another really good one. Mm. David Power R. Hawkins? Force is the next one. David R. Hawkins. Yeah, okay. David R. Hawkins, which is the Letting Go one. And then yep. um, what was the other one again? Power Versus Force. Power Versus Force. Okay, I'll add that one. Mm. This is force. Add that to really the, good stuff. Yeah, cool. Have a look at that one. I was going to ask you about the books, but you just mentioned it already. That's great. How about I your um, what's your books? Yeah, nice, nice. What about your current daily routine as well? Um, what's your daily routine like? You probably uh, yeah, probably a bit of reading, exercise, and yep. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, as I was getting better, I realized that I I, I didn't want to go to doctors anymore. Okay. Okay. And um, I just made a decision one day. I was like, no more doctors, no more medication. The stuff's killing me. Mm. I hate going to there because they treat you like another number. The room is always full. Like, and it's not their fault. I mean, they've got a room full of patients and they're just like yeah. in and out, in and out, in and out. I don't know why they make appointments with people because they're never on time. Mm. Um, you know, so you can't plan your day around that either. And I was just like, no more. So I made a decision. I'm going to focus on my health. I'm going to focus on exercising. I'm going to focus on nutrition. I'm going to focus on my mindset mm. and I'm going to create space. Okay. And, um, it was interesting. First thing I did was get a personal trainer and, uh, and then I got a nutritionist as well. And so now, and I was already working with a spiritual healer. So now my daily routine is this. Okay. Cause when I first started the exercise, I couldn't lift a two kilogram weight. I physically didn't have the strength. Wow. Okay. And I used to gym five, six times a week yeah, before yeah. that. So um, now what a typical day looks like is I'll get up at about six o'clock mm. um, and almost immediately I'll, I'll go and I'll start doing some exercises. They're like, like 20 minutes, 30 minute exercises. Mm, I like to do a, bit, a bunch of skipping, get the body warmed up. Mm, nice. um, some abs. I like to do my abs in the morning. Um, and then either some like push-ups or squats, you know, top body, top or bottom body exercises. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, then I'll come down and I'll, I'll have some tea, um, make some breakfast, um, do some, yeah, just do some planning, do some brain feed, mm -hmm. um, you know, get excited for the day, get the right stuff in. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll take a bit of a break and just like reflect and meditate a little bit. And then I'll get my day started. Mm -hmm. Um, and then throughout the day, so I'll have like my meetings or whatever. And I've, I've structured my days very specifically on there's certain things that I do on certain days and I've got specific time slots for sales and all the rest. Mm. And then normally uh, in the middle of the day, about, you know, 12 o'clock, I'll do another exercise. I'll do my a proper full on exercise session. So you do two, two sessions a day. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. Really determined there. <laughs> really driven. You know, I feel like, 
it's it's more a case of what does my body respond to best mm. um but then there's also days where i go like two days without doing any exercise or anything you mm. know so it was interesting one of the guys one of the, the people that we're working with you know one thing that they said is that you know constant um like having things constant kills innovation right but also you know predictability kills innovation constant predictability but also constant unpredictability kills innovation as well so you've got to find mm. a good balance between it mm. and they were talking about managing your energy and this is something i've learned so you know during the week what i'll do is i'll go into a um what do they call it a a planned slump a planned slump you know what's that planned slump to manage your energy mm. so it's like you know instead of going full out all the time and hustle 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 and then you just hit those days where you feel dead and you don't want to do it <laughs> yeah because it happens to all of us mm. right is that you actually plan it out during the, it's a controlled slump that's the word i'm looking for controlled slump mm. So like on a Wednesday morning, you don't do it on a Monday because a Monday is a leverage day. Mondays, mm. you want to be pushing as much as possible to get the, the energy for the week, to get the sales, to get the momentum, all the rest. So typically I do it on like a Wednesday or a Thursday where I, I'll kind of just lie in bed for a couple of hours. I'll mess around on Facebook. I'll, mm. you know, make breakfast. I'll, you know, chat to my fiance. We'll have a bit of a laugh. And like, maybe I'll start up my day at like, I don't know, eight, nine, sometimes 10 o'clock. Mm. and just take it really easy that's really good you know and that allows me to to manage my energy instead of going like flat out for two weeks and then i crash mm, 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 mm. yeah that's um because some sometimes uh, i'm just working so much and I, I don't stop and if i stop for a bit just to lie in bed just to rest i feel bad i feel guilty i'm thinking oh you know i gotta keep going gotta keep going but um, but when you got when you're talking about the controlled slump, it's like you're giving yourself permission. If it's, if it's on the calendar, it's like okay, exactly. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna relax and and I'm do, I'm giving myself permission to relax, you know, to recover before, you know, I hit, yeah. hit it again. So that's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you want to sit and do some thinking, um, if you want to do some planning, you can absolutely do that. But it's nice to just like do nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, and I find that keeps my energy. It keeps my energy good. And, mm. and then I can focus when I need to focus because I've done the lazy stuff, you know, sit and play yep. PlayStation or whatever yep. it is. Yeah. 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 That's really good. You, it's like you've identified the, the key areas of your life. Just, to, I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do, but you focus on the key areas. You've got the balance there. You figured out how to do the LinkedIn thing, um, how to generate the leads as well. And uh, yeah, you've got the balance on the mind as well. So that's excellent. There's a lot of gold in this working one. Working on it constantly. <laughs> working on it constantly, man. I think that's one of the, the secrets is continual personal development. Yeah. Yeah. So you're into personal development, obviously. You're big, big on that one. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all, all of that, a lot of that stuff has come from personal development and mm. business development. You know, there's not much, in my mind, there's not much of a difference between the two of them. Yep. Um, okay. Especially when you're playing at a high level because most of the, the, the most of the successful people like it's 80 90 percent mindset mm, mm, okay you know, so you work on that and then all the strategies fall into place mm, mm, definitely okay so um one more question is let's say that you were to go into a time machine and you press yeah. a button and then you go back you know 10 15 maybe 20 years talk to your younger self what would you say i would say invest more learn invest how to more. invest more mm, learn how to it. invest properly from the beginning Invest in Dude, business a, or yourself I made a or a lot of money. Okay. Wealth, wealth creation, wealth creation. Okay. I'm good at selling. I'm great at making money. Mm, right. And for good. the first bunch of years of my life, I was also great at spending money. Right. <laughs> so what I would have done is cars. Yep. Meet, meet the girls. <laughs> of course. hundred percent, man. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. And, and listen, I've done some fantastic things in of my course. life. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sales. <laughs> of course. I've got some stories. Um, and I, I kind of looked back and I was like, even when I was sick and I, I thought to myself, I was like, you know what, if I die, I've done what people have on their bucket lists. I've done that and more. Done it already. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I don't have anything left unsaid with my friends and my family. And you know, like I've, I've experienced the world. I've experienced life. I mean, there's always more, of course there's mm. always more, mm. but like if something had to happen, I'd be like, I've lived a great life. 
you know, I've experienced a hell of a lot and it's, and beautiful, beautiful experiences. Mm. Traveled, you know, traveled, I've been to, I don't know, 39, 39 countries, I think was the last one. Oh, Some nice. of them multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, and I look at that and I'm like, you know, the one thing I would have done differently is I would have learned how to invest more of my money from a younger age because then right now I'd be financially free. Mm -hmm. Okay. So learn to invest uh, maybe in stocks, real estate, um, business. Yeah, it just, just keeps around yourself with investment knowledge. Yeah, yeah have, have the different so. options, you know, because mm. I'm, as I'm, cause I'm learning it now. Mm. <clears throat> and <clears throat> one of the big things is that, you know, the guys are saying, you know, like diversify your portfolio, have different interests, you know, gold, silver, Bitcoin property. You know, mm. Robert Kiyosaki mm. is big on that at the moment. Gold, silver, Bitcoin property. Yeah. Um, you know, when he's got a bunch of each, um, you know, some of my other friends are really good at, at trading, you know, so each one is different, but, you know, definitely choosing, choosing something and going for it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, so honestly, I would have chosen two things. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just real estate. You just, real estate yeah. and stocks. Real estate real and stock. stocks to make, yep. to make money mm. and then buying gold. And stuff. Yeah. And what, what about you? If your, I'd known Bitcoin would do what it did today, then oh, yes, yeah. that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I keep dreaming about that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was feeling like if I could go back 10 years, just buy Bitcoin, everything mm -hmm. as much as you can. Go yeah, ahead. yeah. Yeah, go back in time and tell your younger self to buy Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Big, big borrow and steal, whatever you can, go buy it. 100%. What about your future, future goals, uh, future plans? Any future plans for the business? Yeah, definitely. And, yep. yep. Definitely. So, I mean, we, um, you know, myself and my fiance, we were supposed to get married last month, actually on the 11th of April. Mm -hmm. um, but this whole lockdown thing, it's just, you know, so I'd like to, that is his first goal. Okay. Yep, okay. Is to, yep. to get nice. that, um, you know, next six months, we want our business to be at $300,000 a month. Um, mm -hmm. where <clears throat> and here's the key thing where it doesn't require me or my business partner. Mm. Right. So the business can run without it. And then I want to be, you know, I want to be buying and selling businesses. Um, I love that. And buying and mm. selling real estate and businesses. That's mm. what I want to be doing. Mm. Um, because I love getting businesses set up and running. I love getting businesses, um, you know, going. I love seeing them profit. I love seeing how people change their lives because of it. Mm. Um, and it's, it's exciting, man. So, mm. you know, for me, and, and if our business is, if this business is at that stage, <laughs> where it's generating me those kind of returns, I'm not going to need to work. So I can focus on, on doing these kind of things. Mm -hmm. That's really good. And I think there's, yeah. And obviously we, you know, we've got kids in the plan and, you know, a, a house where a lifestyle house where it's not just, you know, a place to live in with four walls, mm. um, but it's a place where we can live life, you know, and we've got all the toys and the things that we love doing, you know, so we have got some, some beautiful visions for that as well. Mm but we want to do it from a place that we've got investments paying for it. Mm, that's beautiful. I, um, that reminds me, I interviewed someone, his name is Brad Sugars. He wrote the book. Uh, he's an action business coach. He teaches people how to build businesses, right? And he's got a yeah. formula. He calls it um, the business chassis, which is leads times conversion rate equals sales. Oh, well, it's yeah. a lot bigger, but you know, that, that's just the basic gist of it. And, um, and it, yeah, it never ceases to amaze me that you hundred percent businesses always need leads. If you can just nail down the lead, generation part that's it you can pretty much buy your own you know you write your own ticket you can go traveling you can do anything you want you know so if exactly. you've got like that consistent amount of leads from your linkedin then yeah you've got the income and then from the income you do whatever you want so i think um yeah your rainmaker yeah. system is beautiful so yeah yeah thanks man mm -hmm. now, i look at it, it's like leads income people yeah systems because mm -hmm. I want people to, if I have a steady flow of leads and income coming in, I can then hire people to take that over for me. Yeah. And then I can remove myself from that and put systems in place so exactly. that it can run without me. Yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. where it gets fun. Mm, you know? mm, mm, mm. I'm focusing on all the business, on all the, the non-sexy business stuff because sales and marketing and lead generation <laughs> sexy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the non-sexy stuff is like the business structures. And, yeah, you know, yeah tax and all of that stuff but that's what helps you grow it that's what mm. helps you become profitable mm. and sustainable mm, that's right
Yeah. All right. So how can people get in contact with you and find out more about the Rainmaker system? Yeah, absolutely. So best mm. way to do it, obviously, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, right? yep. Connect with me on LinkedIn, Matt Clark, of course, yep. SA. <laughs> yep. yep, 100%. And um, do me a favor as well. If you are connecting with me on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. um, send me a message as well. Tell me where you heard of me. Tell me that you heard of me on, on Ko's show um, mm. so that I can let him know as well. Um, and also then the next step is, how do, how do you feel about, can I give them a free gift? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now? Yep, yeah, I yeah. add it to the, uh, to the show notes as well, yep. Excellent. So mm. on my website, www.thevirtualedge.com, you can go and get the 20 minute profile makeover, right? Which is going to get you going with some of the steps that we've spoken about today, right? Thereafter, there is, it's 100% free. So you can go and download that for free. Thereafter, there's a video, a 47 minute training video, which will walk you through the steps, some of the things that we've gone through today and more that you can start implementing in your business. Now, there's no sale, there's no pitch at the end of that. Um, my thoughts behind this is like, you know, I want people to like what we've got and, and want to work with us. So this is, you know, how can I ask you to invest if you don't know what you're investing into and, and if you don't like me, like if we don't like each other, we're not going to work well together, mm. right? So I want people to get to know us first and to go through some of the stuff, to implement it, to like it, what it is. And then if you want to jump on a call with us, you know, you can just click the button and schedule a call with us and, and we can see how we can work together further. Mm, awesome. Okay. So, um, is it, so it's, uh, what's the link again? It's virtual edge forward slash. The, the, oh, the virtual edge.com. The virtual edge.com. Okay. That's it. And it's right on the front page there. Awesome. Get the free training. Get the free training. Yep. Looking forward to that. It's a makeover. So you'll be able to um, find out more information about how they can improve the LinkedIn and get to know you more as well. And then to determine, you know, how to work with you and uh, determine the right fit as well. So that's really good. Definitely. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for that. Awesome. Absolute well, um, Matt, I really appreciate your time today. You've definitely uh, dropped a lot of gold today and um, you know, thank you for sharing, you know, your wisdom in lead generation getting us a glimpse of your lifestyle as well. And, um, you know, wish you all the best for your future endeavors as well. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much for having me on. Like, uh, really enjoyed it and some really good questions as well. Fantastic. Yeah.